Hello there, I'm a core designer, but I hate modeling in Blender. Or at least I used to hate modeling in Blender, until I discovered what I'm gonna teach you today. I'm used to modeling in something called Autodesk Alias, and it's a surfacing software that allows you to be very precise with your model, etc. So here, I have a situation where I have this big surface that's continuous. So if you check the, the reflections, you see it's, it's perfect. Like, the, the reflections are really clean, and that's because this is constructed like this. This is one big surface. If I trim it, you can see it's basically one big surface like this. And this is happening inside it without affecting any topology issue or whatever, because this is surfacing. I reproduced the same situation in Blender. This right here is how I would do it before I discovered how to fix it. The topology, that's what I don't like about Subdiv. It's stuff here affects stuff here yeah this is not good you can see there is pinching here here too if i put the zebra here which you can put in the mat caps by the way you can see this is not continuous you have this going on and even over here you have this part maybe if i can shake it like this wait maybe render view yeah so you see this curling like this this is not good so one solution to this is this example right here so here you have this big surface like this that has perfect reflections but the issue is there is no roundness to the surface it's all flat and this is not good because in automotive design you never have anything that's flat even the cyber truck has curvature on the surfaces i know it because i had to model it for a class anyways so yeah this the reflections go well but it's flat and the solution was super simple. You just do this, S, Z, zero. I already did it, so it does nothing here, but that's a very intuitive solution. It works, but once again, this is flat. I don't want flat. So my goal is how do I make this effect, but on this kind of model. And I came up with this, which is a hybrid workflow that uses a surfacing logic from this kind of software brings it into blender using shrink wraps first of all let's admire the result here see the zebra here how it's going on this surface the l side it's all perfect it's one surface it's one surface if you check the reflections like this one surface almost no artifacts around here so in a surfacing workflow, what you would do is have big surfaces, you trim into them and then you would do stuff around them. Like for example here, this one goes into this one, then I can trim this with an intersection, then I can fillet this, fillet this, etc. Same workflow here, I have big surfaces and I have intersection between the surfaces. And then you can have your, your working topology. So this is all flat, you work with flat topology. You give it enough definition so that it can deform and you shrink wrap it. Okay, so how do we proceed with this? Okay, so here we're gonna practice. I showed you before a few examples of like the technique being used versus the technique not being used. So my brain works in this weird way where I see big surfaces and other big surfaces intersecting with uh, surfaces to create stuff basically, okay? So here what I see as a designer, I see this big surface here that I'm gonna intersect with these two. I'm gonna keep this part basically as if I was doing a cut like this with the knife tool, okay? But we're keeping the surface like super simple, thus super clean, because the simpler, the cleaner, right? And I have this, which is gonna be our model. Okay, so for this, we're gonna work flat, create our topology, and then project onto the surfaces to create our model. So to work flat, I can go here, display as wire, I put myself in pure side view and I'm going to work projecting everything. So I'm going to have to work exactly where it intersects. If you don't do that, it will do weird stuff. So I'm going to just knife tool this and cut here because the intersections are here. I can add definition here because I see it turns a bit. I can hide the big surface and now we see that the intersection between this surface and this one is doing something like this. 
And now I'm going to work on my topology. So for it to turn nice, I'm going to just go to the corner of there. At least I can do whatever. This is going to be our main big surface. Number one that is hidden there. Uh, this is going to be number two and this is going to be number three. And we have enough to already have a good model. But what we need to do now is add some definition. So usually you say keep it simple to have good reflections but here we are gonna ha we are gonna add complexity because we are gonna project that complexity on onto the clean surfaces and that's gonna be what's clean okay vertex grouping so what we're gonna do is have zones that will shrink wrap onto the surfaces behind there so yeah i'm gonna select everything here so now i do vertex group assign number one goes with surface number one same goes for number two, number two, assign, and number three, here we go. We're gonna start with number one, shrink wrap onto number one. So this is just projecting everything now. Also, we were working from this axis, so we wanted to project only on this axis. So I'm gonna do project instead of uh, nearest point or blah, 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 blah. And I can select the, the axis and project it. I knew it was dead because I have a rotation here. Uh, anyways, and now we're seeing that everything is getting projected. I want only number one. And you see where we're going now. Number two, surface two. Makes sense. Now number three. I just duplicate again. Number three, number three. Okay. And now we have the model. Model is done. I save quickly. And now we can check with subdiv on. And the subdiv come comes after the surface. I'm set to three or something. What? Breaking my PC. Okay, I'm dead. 13. What the fuck, bro? Now you see the surfacing, the reflections are as intended, like we adopted the reflections of the simpler surfaces onto a more complex model. And that's how you get those intersected, those, uh, um, how would you say, like uh, good surfacing. And see, I can still touch the topology, have it more creased here. I can have uh, this going closer to have it more creased. It's just modeling, but it's flat here. And you could, like, once you're happy with this, you apply the shrink wraps. And now the model isn't flat anymore, and you can touch around. And if you mess something up, you can still reproject everything onto it. I'm gonna show you now an example of where it can be used effectively. So this is a personal project. Uh, I used alias to do a first pass of modeling because I really like using alias. And then I made uh, the, this subd model. Okay, so maybe now you can understand like why I really, really wanted to have the clean surfacing style. So in, in my head, this big part is all the same surface. If I show you the sketch, this whole highlighted part here is one surface in my head and that's how i sketch that's how i imagine shapes and this green one is another one this is why i really wanted to develop that technique because uh see how useful it is now i have like yeah you see the number of vertex groups i have 17 surfaces around the car that i wrap i shrink wrap onto to have it be clean and this is like i'm still surprised that this is a blender model and that i've made it because like before discovering this technique i would have been unable to do that this is the alias model and this yeah this comes from cad so the topology there is none like this is just shit as you can see this is this is a patch of surfaces and i'm gonna show you like quickly the the different surfaces here they are <laughs> So this is the one big surface going all across the car. I shrimp wrap to this one, number one. Uh, this is just for windshield, roof, and uh, the rear one. Because if you check like the density here, 
that I needed in other parts of the car. Like, I, when I need density somewhere, that's what used to frustrate me in, in Blender. When I need density somewhere, it messes up another part of the model. So here, I needed density here to go all around, like Control R, a loop cut. And it, it messed up the reflections here. But with the new technique, it's not the case anymore. We can check the zebra like... Here it's normal because it turns down here, but here there is a lot of density not affected. That's it for me today. I just wanted to share that modeling technique with you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps some of you. I know it's very niche. Uh, like I've, I'm, I've been doing niche videos, to be honest. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope it helped. And uh, please subscribe, whatever you want to do. Thank you.